Like, I feel like I've graduated into being an actual singer-songwriter. <laughs> I've been, like, part singer-songwriter, part pop star for the last 10 years. This is, like, the first time I've done this and always wanted to have a band, but the way my career went, I just never did it. Can I interrupt? How you doing? How are you? Nice to meet you. This is Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, we did. Well remembered. Yeah. A lot of band members. Oh, have you guys done an interview before? We Was it Primavera, I think we met? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, nice to see you. Nice I got treated to a little... Uh, private show just then. Private I didn't go check. full <laughs> full health. I've just been doing shows all week, so I didn't want to knack on my voice. I actually, Aaron, I, I didn't have a voice yesterday. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, at all. I, I spent the whole day. I was going to say the then sounded amazing. Didn't exist yesterday. I was Ooh. just like chugging honey, lemon, ginger, not talking. <laughs> How has it been? Because I don't think you guys have actually played a show together yet, right? That's no, tonight, no, no. the first one. No, we d all, all that we have done is being in the studio together, you know? Wow. And Aaron has literally brought the record to life. It sounds exactly like the record, which is the first time I've done it as well, because usually my live shows are so different to the record because it's all with loop pedal and it's all yeah. like choppy and anything can happen. And But this is like the first time I've done this. And like, this is what I idolized as a kid. I come to see Damien Rice and it would sound exactly like the record. And I, you know, I always wanted to have a band like this, but the way my career went, I just never, did it. I just You've done always... it the opposite way that people yeah, yeah, kind of precisely. do it in a way. Precisely. This is the way that I like doing it though, because I feel like, I was, I was saying to Aaron, I feel being 32 and making a like singer-songwriter record, you can't really do that at 19. A yeah. record that actually yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. has... I feel like you need to have lived a little bit. Totally. And there's something about coming into a room like this and getting like 13 people on stage or something like that, I think. Yeah. 12 musicians plus Ed to 13. How many rehearsals have you had? We rehearsed for a week at Long Pond at my studio, and we were piping in vocals from the record to play too. And it was really fun. It's just been so fun. And then we've only this is the second time we've played it with Ed. Just what you just saw. But First never, audience, never tonight. to an audience. You look yeah. out there, seated audience as well, which I wasn't expecting until I walked in. It was like, oh, okay. Well, I sort of, you know, I play to standing audiences all the time. But I saw I, again. I feel like I'm at the point in my career where people will listen. Yeah. And I, f I feel also the fact that no one's allowed to film it tonight yeah. will change the mood as well because people actually, all the gigs I've done like that is people listen to the songs more. They're more in the moment. But I was thinking, I was kind of like, what is more nerve wracking out of playing with the loop pedals that, as we know, can go wrong and you can have tech issues and suddenly you're on stage at Wembley or whatever and but you I don't have to mind get that. through it. I don't mind that. Uh, so I'm not nervous when I go on stage with a loop pedal because I know that if it does mess up, that's part of the show. And people would be like, oh, that was different to the last show. And he did this and he changed it. I've played with a loop pedal for 18 years now. I got one when I was 14. So I just know that when I mess up, I can bring it back round. But with this show, you know, I've, some of these songs I've never played live before. I did one show at the Union Chapel with some of these, like with eight songs back in November for like a secret show. But like songs like Vega and Borderline and uh, Dusty and Curtains, like I've never ever played them. So I just want to get them. Spot on. So why do it? Why force yourself to do something like this? Is it that thing of trying to push yourself, trying to keep it interesting, trying to do something different? My shows at the moment are quite like a, a mishmash of like hits here and album cuts here and blah, blah, blah. But I would love for so the show tonight, I open up for 40 minutes of just hits. So everyone gets their You're supporting fix. yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone gets their fix. And then I go, right, now you're just going to hear the album as intended in full. Ed, obviously you've worked with a few collaborators over the years, not that many really. How has this partnership actually worked? I mean, it's totally different to any way that I've worked before. He comes with like a finished product and goes, write what you feel. And there's no like, oh, that line sounds a bit weird or this. It's just you write brain to page and the song's done. And then you go in and you basically form it. And if anything, we strip back more from the recordings that he sent. We clicked. There was it was like a little, it was like a wildfire. When we got together, we thought we'd make try a few things, and we ended up with thirty six songs or something. It was quite a fun way of working though, because we had to get like two songs before lunch every day. So we'd arrive <laughs> and just be like, right, let's make sure we nail two songs, and then we do in the afternoon as many as we could do. But that's the thing. Like, so many times in the studio, I go in and I go, what do I write about? What's the first chord? What's the Con concept, what's this? But if someone's just going, here, here it is. Yeah. It's really easy to write a lot because you don't have to think about anything other than the melody or the lyrics. My favorite song on the album is No Strings. And that just came from Aaron being on piano and me singing, and then we put it down and it's, it's, it's as if the song didn't matter. It was just like, okay, we'll just 
and then coming back to it, it's now my favourite song on the record. It's and it very sounded amazing here. Thank you as well. Thank um, you. Are you feeling confident about tonight? Then you're feeling happy. Rehearsal's over. It is like I, 5 p.m. You're on stage in <laughs> two hours. It's always like jumping into cold water at first when you do something for the first time. But we've put so much care into it, and a lot of the songs kind of play themselves, you know, in a good way. You're just like they feel like they are meant to exist, you know. So. Are the smaller gigs, in a way, more scary than playing to 108,000 people? I think definitely small, small gigs. If I was playing to 30 people, 100%. But I think they all, they all have different things that scare you. You know, in this environment, I'm playing with world-class musicians, and I wouldn't class myself as a world-class musician, so I've got to really up my game tonight to be great. Would well, you, would I you think class that's, him as a world-class musician? I would, musician? for sure. <laughs> I don't believe in the walls, but, like, it's... I don't know. It's like... People have different, some people play lots of notes really precisely, other people like have this incredible ability to like synthesize it all, which is what you're doing. So, like he's a drum machine in a. Aaron has pushed me to seven chords though, I'm usually four <laughs> chords. He's got me on seven now. What are you going to do for the next couple of hours? What's your process for? Normally, if it was a national show, I would drink, but I'm <laughs> debating that right now. <laughs> Did you get pissed before you go on? Not fully, but a little. I mean, you, if that music requires a suspension of disbelief <laughs> just to be like. <laughs> the last time I drank on stage, I was playing in Holborn in a bar called the Ivy Bar. And uh, they, I was playing covers, and they used to give me tequila shots in between the gigs, in, in between the songs to get me to play longer. And I just remember hitting my loop pedal and it like flipping over and being oh. like... And then afterwards, there was a guy who was an A&R at a record label that walked up to me and he was like, it was really dreadful. <laughs> and then I was like 17 and I was like, I'm never, ever, ever drinking before stage again. Show me around a little bit. What else do we have up I'll here? Let you guys, I'll let you guys chat. Right, cool. Cheers. Cheers. Good Good you're going to go and uh, drink whiskey now? No, no, now you, now you scared me. I'm just going <laughs> to keep it sober. So. No, you should have it. Get a little bit loose. Be good. This room, we spoke about it a little bit before. You played, I think, 2012. The last time I was here, actually, was with um, Jamal. Um, we yeah. came to watch Dave Chappelle and sat literally just there, side of stage. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't been here since that. I mean, it's going to be strange tonight, the first show doing these songs. When you write such a personal album and it comes from a place of pain, and I know that you've written songs from that kind of place before, mm. and Michael and, and other people as well, the point when you actually play it live for the first time or it goes out on the radio for the first time, does it change for you? Yeah, because I think songs don't have ownership from the, uh, the artist. I mean, obviously they do ownership-wise, but, you know, Perfect, I wrote about my wife, but no one in the world thinks that that song's about my wife. They think it's about their partner. You know, yeah. the, the song is owned by them. And that's what I found with, with Eyes Closed. The first time I ever played Eyes Closed was when I did that secret gig in November, and I cried introducing it, I cried mid, and I cried after it. And then now it's out, I've had so many people message me their stories of their loss and grief, and now it belongs to them. And now I don't actually feel sad playing it, because I know I'm looking out and playing it to an audience of people that connect to it. And I think songs are just, they are that. They're owned by your audience. What were your thoughts coming in here today for the first time, just stepping into the, the stage? I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a really beautiful night. I think it'll probably be one of the best shows I've ever played. Um, for so many reasons. Like, I feel like I've graduated into being an actual singer-songwriter. <laughs> I've been like, been like part singer-songwriter, part pop star for the last 10 years, 11 years or whatever. And that's by design, you know, I really enjoy playing songs like Bad Habits. I really enjoy playing songs like Shape of You and Perfect and stuff like that. But I, this record has come at the right time in my personal life, but also my professional life. I think it's, I've, I've earned the right to seat people, take away their phones and say, listen to a whole record. Have you ever had any stage accidents where you've tried to do this, taking a tumble? Uh, yeah, first, actually, the, like, first show on the Taylor Swift Red Tour in America, I, I had, like, boxes that I would jump from, that was, like, my stage. And on the very first show, I'd flown over, I was really ill, jet-lagged, and I remember jumping and then and falling. And that's, you know, that is a meme that lives for life, but <laughs> it's, it's a human meme. So with touring now, I read the Rolling Stone piece and it was, I didn't realise you have like kids rooms set up yeah. backstage, <laughs> which is, it seems obvious when you say it. How has it changed for you, actually being able to take family on the road? Um, do you know, it's, di it's, it's different. I always think they're having a different childhood to what I had, but then my childhood was different to what my dad had. It was, you know, I think, I think that is a normal thing and you just go where your parents are. And, 
I think it's far more important to have two loving parents actively in your life than mm. one absent one and one. Mm. Yeah, so it works. It's obviously tough. You're moving them the whole time, but uh, but yeah, we we had a lot of fun. Do you think that these shows? Are you just going to keep it to full orchestra for a handful of shows? Or I'm doing two. This is it. Two here, in here, total here in New York. Really? That's, that's it. Me and Aaron are working on something else, and I would love to in future do this and have the gig be whatever me and Aaron do next and next and next and just that's the gig. And maybe the opening act is me doing the, the hits. But I think doing this on a, you know, on a O2 stage for three nights could be really beautiful. How easy is it to let somebody like Aaron into your circle? Not just as a songwriter, but as a live performer as well. Because obviously Aaron has his own cachet as well. He's not a session musician. He no, is... which is why I'm really honoured that he's here today. You yeah, know, it's really him giving it. his time. D dude, he's like one of the greatest. He's one of the greatest and he, he, he doesn't have to do this for anyone. And uh, I'm really, really honoured that he's one, putting his name on the line being like, I'm going to get my friends to play on this, but two, putting his name on the line being like, and I'm going to play in it too. It's a big, it's a big deal. How did that conversation even come about? Did he suggest it? Did you ask him? I said to him, like, at some point, I want to play the record in full, and would you do that? Like, it, we're not going on tour. He's not committing for two, two years. We're doing two one-off gigs, and we're going to do them really well, but, yeah. It feels it's good. It's exciting. It's exciting, because it is one-off, and it's different. And I think that to fire yourself and be creative, you probably need to do things like this. Otherwise, does it become kind of like that Hello Cleveland thing in Spinal Tap, where you get to the stage and touring, and you think, where am I today? I have in my career definitely, you know, we played like 139 arenas in 2017, and by the end of that, you're like, okay, yeah, like, you I don't know where I am. Break, but then, what different. do I do otherwise? Like, what? Like, I am a live performer. Like, what do I do otherwise? I'm, I'm either in studio or I'm on stage. And other than that, like, when I stop those two things, I get really, really unhappy because I've got no yeah. purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Professionally, I'm talking about. I, I'd say, like, personally, obviously there's always stuff to do because I have a family and stuff, but professionally, like, there's nothing else I want to do. I want to make records and I want to be on stage. You don't get nervous, do you? I'm You're really nervous before. tonight. I, really? Yeah, I almost threw up earlier. I'm, I'm really, really nervous. Really? Really nervous. I've never played these songs before and I have to get them perfect. This is the first time I'm playing them. You, it wasn't going to be filmed. This is the thing. This was just going to be a gig for fans. <laughs> and then, and then we came on board. No, you guys were like, we should do something special. And then we were like, well, we are doing this like fan thing. But if it wasn't filmed, I'd just be like, whatever. But you still did it. That's the thing with you. Even though you have that scared thing of saying, oh my God, do I really want to film it? There's part of your brain in your psyche that just says, yep, I'll do it. Well, I think it makes for a better experience because there's, you know, I don't know how many people are coming tonight. You said 3,000. So say 3,000 people are coming tonight. There's, you know, maybe 100,000 people that might want to watch this gig that will now tune into it. So that it's good to be able to then offer it. It's not just this special one-off thing that no one will ever see again, you know? Is this the end?